What's up? Welcome back, guys. Episode 30 today. I was going to say 13. Shit. <laughs> That's yeah. a new milestone for us. That's good. Yeah. 30 episodes in. That's only we've about... Been cons- we've been real consistent. Yeah, it's been good. We've been weekly since we, we started. Mm-hmm. So let's keep it up. We only have uh, 5 million episodes to go to catch up with Cody. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Jesus Christ. He's like, yo, I got a, I got a new studio coming. We'll do like three episodes a week or something. I was like, oh, shit. Wow. That's uh, impressive. But welcome back, guys. But he's, he, he's pulling back on coaching, right? So he's also, taking some stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the new setup. I'm actually sitting down for once, which is kind of nice. My feet started, began to hurt, so uh, we're upgrading the studio. And we can see studio. his nice flow from the side. I got a fade side. yesterday, you know, <laughs> <laughs> for the people watching. Yeah. It's good to see you again. I missed you last week. I know. I'm honestly so upset I had to miss that episode because I love talking to Cody. Yeah. But we'll do it. We'll do it again because I think we, yeah. we both have more like stuff we could talk about. and uh, Yeah. It would be cool yeah. to have you, obviously. So let's let's yeah, definitely yeah. get him back on the show. Totally. So today's another Q and A episode. But first, for the uh, the new listeners that we have, because we do get new listeners as well, also want to point out that our podcast is brought to you by Odyssey Coaching Systems and KA Training and Nutrition for coaches. This podcast is specifically to help you answer your questions, teach about nutrition training, etc. But just so you know, if you need more personal help, we are there. This is what we do. We are taking on new people. So just putting it out there, you will always be able to find the links in the show notes. But first, before we get into the episodes, let's do some personal updates, Christine. Ladies first. Yeah, I feel like I have so much going on right now, but it's like all really good stuff. I I just feel like I'm having so much like growth in my business. Um, and just being very productive, which honestly feels so good because when I'm not productive, it almost like gives me anxiety. I don't know if you're like that, but it's, I saw this post the other day. It's like product productivity kills anxiety. And it's so true. Um, anyways, I'm doing a lot in the business right now. And, uh, so where do I start? Um, I, I know I've talked about being in mentorship, the mentorship. So I'm working, I'm in one mentorship with Casey Joe, which is more, uh, on the business. So like building my business there. Um, and then I'm in a mentorship more so in the business. So like, uh, complicated, complex client cases, uh, you know, people dealing with like PCOS, Hashimoto's, um, weight loss resistance, things like that. Uh, it's been really, really good. I'm learning a lot and I just, I'm so interested in those types of topics, like just hormone related, like autoimmune stuff, because I deal with that. So I'm like, just very interested in it and I love learning about it. Um, and then on the actual like business side of things, I am, uh, building out a course, um, currently for my clients. I'm not hundred percent sure when it's going to be out. I'm not like, I, d- I kind of have a deadline like end of March, uh, but I want it to be good. And I'm not the one that's just going to like rush through things and, and make it crap. So, um, doing that, which I'm really excited about just bringing more value to clients that way. And then I also, uh, locked in a guest speaker because I want to start bringing more value that way. Uh, just in terms of like bringing people on that are smarter than me, (laughs) you know, and like specialize in different areas and stuff that like my clients can benefit from. So I'm really, really excited uh, about that. The first one we're having on, she actually specializes in hormone and gut health. Um, And so I'm going to be, she's actually from where I live. It was crazy. Like I put this thing out about, you know, potentially having guest speakers on, on my Instagram. She reached out and she's like, I know you through mutual friends. And I'm like, seriously, like, where, where are you from? And she's like, Clarkston. I'm like, okay. So we met for coffee. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I'm going to be like integrating her into my business as well. So good stuff there. Uh, and then in terms of K training, that's just kind of doing its thing. Um, got the two programs in there. People are loving it. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it on my Did end. you get that new app? Yeah, I, I got I put it on a new platform. It's just way more user friendly. 
um, straightforward. It it's the other one was just, it was good, but it was like kind of complicated and like that could be a make or break for people, honestly. Um, so I, I am on this new, this new platform and I'm really liking it. So are the people. Love it. Sounds mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm doing good too. Yeah. I'm feeling good. To? Two days ago, the sun showed up again. So mm. same here. It's been, I mean, it's not as bad as you obviously, <laughs> but like <laughs> finally we have some sun for sure. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's, it's weird too, because obviously just generally like worldwide, like people kind of struggle during winter times, you know, oh, already. Yeah. Yep. But we, we don't have any sunlight for, well, it, it stays below the horizon for two months. But then the weather's usually shit, so it's been longer than two months now, and um, the sun finally showed up uh, yesterday. Or was it two Man, days? Two I days cannot, ago. I cannot imagine. Like it's, it's, I feel, I sign, I feel significantly different when it's like gray and gloomy and just cold, and then you have days like this. Like the past two days, the sun has been out, and it's like my energy's up, my mood's up. And I'm like, and I, I just can't imagine not having the sun at all or even light, like no light. It's so, so that's the thing. So, you know how like the, the twilight you get like just before sunrise where it's kind of like dark bluish so kind of like that. We do have that. It gets a little okay. lighter too, um, which obviously depending on where in polar night you're at, but in the middle, like December, you know, it's bad. <laughs> so how long does that last? Well, it, it goes below the horizon, uh, end of November, and then it comes back like the last week of January. Oh, it, it'll be above the horizon so like again. Two months. Yeah, it's hard, honestly. Like I would be I, out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the I'm only like, thing I don't I like about to living Florida. <laughs> yeah, no, I, because I, honestly, I love it in Norway. You know, I mean, obviously yeah, it's I, so beautiful there. Yeah, I traveled here five years ago with a friend to see the Northern Lights, and then just got hooked you know i was very yeah. much into photography which is still a hobby of mine uh, which i don't really talk about that much <laughs> but, yeah you're um, good at it but like i i traveled here i moved here like five weeks later to work as a guide you know and then i stayed but that's the yeah. one thing i don't like uh, and i will say it's been better and it wasn't that bad because basically i mean this is also when i, I was working with cody and i mentioned like hey this time of the year is a bit rough usually, but he said as well, because you know as well, like the, the power of your, your mind is huge. And he's oh, like, yeah. well, that might be true, but you can also decide to not let it affect you that much, which is basically what I did. And I told myself, I journaled on that and stuff even, and I will say it was better. I'm not going to lie. Like it still affects me, you know, and energy usually sucks. Yeah, <laughs> Like I feel like physiologically, it's something that you can't totally let not affect you. No. It just will. I swear. Like you have lunch and you want to go to bed because oh, I like, bet. you feel, you feel like it's 11 PM or something, you know, that's it's weird. crazy. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. like you said, like it's pretty much dark all the time like in the middle of polar night and we get a little bit of blue light in the morning, but when it's cloudy, when it's oh. snowing, forget, you know, like, yeah, it's rough. <laughs> that being said, yeah. it's a, it's a good time, you know, to, uh, to yeah. see, to see the sun, the weather is great. And I, it puts me in an amazing mood, honestly, I feel yeah. really good training as well. I've been reverse dieting for a long time now, basically. I mean, I, I passed my expected maintenance already, but I'm just continuing to add 10 grams of carbs every week just to see how much I can crank it up, get the mm-hmm. most out of training. I'm still super lean compared to the end of my cut, almost the same, I would say, same spot, or at least very close to. Nice. And uh, it feels good. Yeah. Also just finished the contest in our uh, Facebook community, which has been great. It was not a public thing, but uh, we just did it behind you know, closed doors. Nice. Had a bunch of people. We had our steps, we, you know, we tracked, we, I actually made it so that everyone at every level could join. So we did calories and protein macros, or just like a meal, like a plate method, you know, mm-hmm. and it was super cool <clears throat> just to do nice. something together. And uh, tonight we're actually announcing the winners. We're giving away over in dollars. That's about over 400 bucks in prizes. So it's uh, 
it's cool to do some fitness shit and make some money along the way too, you know? <laughs> awesome. That's great. But of course, get the health benefits too. That's why we actually do it. That being said, let's actually get into the episode, mm -hmm. starting with our first question. Okay. So question from Corey. What are some food items, food habits, or anything related that is commonly regarded as healthy, but are actually not? Um, okay, so we had here, so I actually kind of talked about this recently on, in my Instagram about my gluten post. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so something that it's, it's, it's more so like mar good marketing, right? Where like people think food products are like healthier because of a label and that's not necessarily true. Okay. So they automatically think that like something gluten-free is healthier than something with gluten. And that's not true. Like sometimes, like some instances, yes, a product might be like higher quality, but what I had talked about was like, say, say you can have, say you can have gluten, the gluten-free pizza option isn't going to be healthier for you. Okay. So that's not a healthy alternative, but if you can have gluten, then yes, it is going to be a healthier alternative because in reality of like how it's going to make you feel and the effects it's going to have on your body, it would be a healthier option for someone like that. Like for myself, or right? Like I can't have Rose. Sorry, my dog is like bawling her eyes out. Um, oh my gosh, hold on one second, okay? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> our camera's following you too. We'll be back in a sec. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Did it follow me? Yeah, yeah, like halfway to like uh -huh. the wall, you know? Oh, okay. So, sorry, my dog was crying. Um, so, yeah. In that sense, it's not like something gluten-free isn't necessarily going to be healthier for you, right? And so these are like misconceptions for sure, or like even like sugar-free or like low fat, right? Like things like that. Um, and I think that kind of, we have, we have it here where like, we're talking about like, I think that kind of falls into the, the labeling of like good and bad food too, right? And more so just looking at it as like, nutrient dense or less nutrient dense. So like people think like, what, what food, like, what are some food items that is common regarded as healthy? So like we think, uh, what could we say? Like vegetables are like really healthy, right? We are really healthy. And then like, um, say like chips are like really unhealthy. Technically they're just more or less nutrient dense. Right. So again, just those labels, right. We can, those can, you know, kind of get mixed up. Yeah. Um, and then what did you want to add? No, I was, I was thinking like, it's even with like brown rice, for example, and white rice, you know? Yes. Honestly, it, in, in my experience with a lot of clients, like the white rice is actually kind of like the better option. If we're looking at digestion, those kind of things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's one, like brown rice versus white, like they're both great or wild rice, you know, like have whichever yeah. one you like and mm -hmm. then you're good kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And if you're like looking at like cranking up your carbohydrate intake, maybe, uh, maybe some digestive issues, I like a cream of rice or like just a, a white rice because it's easy to digest, you know? So it's again, it's context, you know, it depends on the person. Yeah, I'm trying to see, like he said, commonly regarded as healthy, but are actually not. I think, I think we can even take this outside of nutrition. Um, but before I do one, one thing that I, I'm thinking about too, I got a comment on, so Sundays we've been doing hamburgers, mm -hmm. which has been awesome, first of all. And someone commented like, oh, that's a high cal, you know, a, 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 um, what was it again? Like a heavy calorie meal or something. Mm -hmm. And which, you know, like, of course, it is higher in calories. But it, I looked it up and I tracked it and everything. And I was like, well, the burgers we got, they're just, you know, beef and not a lot of added stuff. So you got, there's that. That's basically a minimally processed food, you know? 
Well, it is. The patty, you know. Then we had sweet potato fries that was literally like sweet potato, like olive oil in the air fryer. And then, of course, we had the burger bun. But like even that, like I'd say people would almost assume, okay, hamburger, that's unhealthy. But if you make this stuff yourself, it's actually not too bad either. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's, yeah. It's more calories, but you can plan for that, you know? And again, it's the it's how much we're having, Yeah. right? It's the overconsumption that becomes the issue. Yeah. Like I'm always bringing it back to, all right, like I said this in, again, a post. I'm like, if we're having a diet that's, you know, high in in un, uh, unprocessed foods and nutrient dense foods and et cetera, et cetera. There is room for these, these highly processed things. Yeah. Right. Again, it's like, as long as you're not dominating the diet, it's fine. It yeah. just, it makes things sustainable and realistic. Um, I think that, too, I that mean, that's, that's where I, my head goes with this question is, is the labeling for sure. Yeah. Foods. I think so too. As well as certain habits, and I'm, I wrote this one down. So eating clean all the time in small portions. You, the classic kind of like, you know, I eat well, but I'm, I can't lose weight. Because sure, during the week, we're super strict. And then the weekend comes and we fucking hate life and we overeat. <laughs> but that's a different oh, yeah. story. I have a, I, I mean, I, yeah, I have a, pr this past week, prime example of that with a yeah, client. Yeah. Yeah, so. so that's one. I think too, if we're thinking outside of nutrition, maybe something like, you know, ice baths and, and those type of things, you know, I mm -hmm. feel like sure they can be great. And I love, you know, cold water, you know, dips and stuff. And uh, I'm a big fan of that actually. And I, I think for a lot of people, it can be good from like a, a mental standpoint, mm -hmm. but I also see people getting too much into kind of like the Joe Rogan stuff they see, you know, and <laughs> they'd have to try everything out. And then it's kind of like, well, Cool, but you're also sleeping fucking five hours a night. So let's actually see what fix I that. posted this morning. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> I just <laughs> shared it in my group. I was like, holy shit, this is great. But you know what, though? Like, a lot of people make that mistake. It's like, 100%. Okay. That's why I posted it. <laughs> yeah. And as funny as that video is, like, that's what people do. You know? I know. So, so this guy, I forget his name. <laughs> he's so funny, um, but he's basically going, I watched Joe Rogan. I want to try this intermittent fasting thing. And I'm on day three and it's, I'm in shambles. He's like, this is the third takeout order I've gotten. In two hours <laughs> got, or something. Like, I'm like, this is like, if you're hungry, do not intermittent fast. It will be a disaster. Right. So like, okay, we think intermittent fasting is healthy. Uh, it depends on the person, right? Like, <laughs> I just saw this video like five minutes before we we went live. It's so I good. watched it like four times this morning because it was so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'll keep I'll keep saying this until I'm blue in the face. But guys, like, it's uh -huh. <laughs> it's usually the basic shit that really helps, and all the fancy stuff out there. <laughs> Just don't run with it. just don't run with it, you know? Like don't oh, don't just say, okay, goodness. I watched a video, I, I listened to a podcast, even with our stuff, honestly, like even with our stuff, don't go, hey, I heard this on the podcast. Let me try this right away. Because yeah, this must yeah. also apply to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard not to die over that guy. Oh shit. Have you watched any of his other stuff? No, but I'm gonna oh, follow you, him. I love you. You gotta. It's so funny. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh. Um, you know what? Let me add another one here too. <laughs> I'll try not to laugh anymore. <laughs> I know when you start laughing, like it's really hard to stop. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll try to continue on a serious note. We're gonna have to cut this out. Nick's gonna be like, "You guys are mess." <laughs> Uh, I think <laughs> what is often considered good or healthy training six, seven times a week, often yes. double. I think, I think that's a big one. And I just talked to someone, uh, I don't know, an hour ago, I sent him a quick email. I was like, Hey, I looked into a program that he suggested. I was like, you know what? It looks good. Let's look at this. And then it said, you know, this is the exact program that, you know, whatever NFL, a veteran 
at 8% body fat and this many pounds and blah, blah, blah. I did. I was like, okay, okay, that's cool. Right. And I looked into, into the program and had like a sample week and I was like, you know what? Actually looks pretty decent. You know, I'm not going to say like not do it, but it's six times a week. Now let's look at your current lifestyle. We're looking at shift work. We're looking at mm. not getting enough sleep, a high stress job. There's a big difference there, you know? Totally. And I think that is a big one, you know, like kind of running with someone's program because this dude who is jacked, who looks strong, et cetera, did that, you know, and then kind of like not taking that into your lifestyle and looking at, hey, okay, is this actually a good move for me, you know, or yes. should I actually do less? And a lot of times I'll try to recommend people four times a week, maybe even three if they're very stressed, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'd say like four to five for most people, but still like six nine out of ten people yeah, that, it's a it's really too much. good point because this this is that's very very common that kind of we talked about that with ray a little bit but yeah totally like just like training really hard every single day no it's 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 not the answer no <clears throat> so there's that Especially, and then, then taking into the lifestyle factors that's number one like yeah. everyone's gonna the, their healthy place is gonna be different just depending right. on you know where where they're at what things look like so all right second question yeah cool so from carmen lucille so i'll break this down into three three points basically so she said i'm really interested in the hormonal aspects of nutrition and training and how it affects our long-term health second also nutrition oh, sorry also nutrient deficiency and supplements not workout supplements specifically just for overall health and longevity. And then third, I'm also nine months pregnant, so I'd love to hear info about nutrition while nursing. I know that it might not be your area of expertise, which is not correct, <laughs> um, but no one uh, that I have found talks about it. Okay, cool. So I wanna unpack this, right? So we'll start with one. So the question of uh, hormonal aspects of nutrition and training and how it affects our long-term health. There are simply, there's like too many different hormones to kind of like say hormones, you know, do this or that, you know, neither of them are good or bad. Like we have, we have every single hormone for a purpose. Right. First of all, Some this is a very loaded question for sure. That yeah. Is like extremely complex. Yeah. So, so we basically can't answer this question, but <laughs> honestly, but like in, in reality, there's your hormones. There's a bunch of different ones of them. They can be too high. They can be too low. And neither is usually a good thing. And it's right. also about the ratio, right? If we're looking at estrogen yes. and progesterone, like it's not that either one of them is good or bad. We need to look at the context once again, right? What phase are we in? How hard, how high are they compared to the other? How low, mm -hmm. et cetera? You know, cortisol too. Like it's not bad. No, we need yeah, cortisol. Uh, yeah. And like, in the because in, I'm, I'm trying to like read this question a little bit more so i'm really interested in the hormonal aspects of nutrition training so in that from that standpoint so like the, your hormones are impacted by both okay um training they can definitely affect training good and bad right so like uh, when it comes to training, like, um, if we're under fueling or over training, again, this can, it can go either way. It can be both. Uh, we're going to see negative effects on hormones and that is going to then, um, impact your training, right? So your, your performance, uh, your recovery, you know, your lifting, you could end up getting weaker. You could get slower, um, we could see menstrual cycle going wonky. And then now we're messing with like, you know, bone and tendon health, uh, you know, way more risk of injury when we are messing, when we're, we're training, the training just isn't ideal or like in the right place. Right. So under feeling over training. Um, and then it, it kind of is the same with the nutrition. So like, our food choices definitely affect our hormonal health um, in terms of like quality of food and, and nutrients and things like that, like directly play into thyroid health. Um, 
And then again, it's kind of the same thing where like if we're under eating, like chronically under eating, we're going to see uh, down regulations in hormones. If we're overeating, same type of thing. Like if like for a, ma- a male, for example, if, if a male has like a lot of body fat, we can see that testosterone um, testosterone is going to be a little bit lower and I don't know a little bit little could just be could be very low it just depends on the person and then we can see higher estrogen in men which we don't I mean we don't want that um and then again it can come to like if we're under fueling for females like we can lose your cycle um if we're if we have the proper dose of proper food the quality of the food quantity of the food and we're training um at the proper dose for us, you know, that specific person, hormones are probably going to be in their, the, the best place there. And then obviously like managing stress, right? Like what lifestyle is looking like. Cause like now you can go into like, okay, sleep's going to affect your hormones. And then, I mean, everything is intertwined. So like it can go in so many different directions, just depending on like what we're looking at, right. With that certain person. Um, how it affects our long-term health. I mean, it, it'll, it'll affect everything, what we're doing, our health, just in general, our brain health, um, frick, just everything, our hormones, our hormones are, um, they, they play massively in how we feel, um, in, you know, how we, if we build muscle, if we lose muscle, um, yeah, I mean, it should always be a priority to be optimizing our hormonal health. And that comes from nutrition and training and sleep and, uh, you know, stress management, all of that. So yeah, that's, I know it's my long winded answer. (laughs) No, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, that's basically that uh, part of the question Mm -hmm. on going on to the next. So also nutrient deficiency and, uh, and supplements, not workout supplements specifically just for overall health and longevity. So even this one ties back to a lot of the same nutrition changes, at least maybe even stress, by the way, um, that could impact um, nutrient like absorption and stuff, but looking into supplements for health. So I would always first start with food because I feel like this is a common one. And I just have someone uh, who onboarded you know, last week, actually, um, bunch of stuff we got to work on and she's basically hey should i be taking this hey should we be doing this you know i have the the multivitamin the fish oil and all that good stuff and i actually do want to get into specific supplementation with her but here's the thing you know things like sleep need to be taken care of things like uh, you know her overall just structure with nutrition you know food choices all that so we need to still start with those basics first so what i like to do is looking at food or if there's a specific condition, maybe already start with some supplements right off the bat, but try to get like the biggest rocks moved first, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's taken care of. Um, we can also use chronometer, which we both use with our clients. If you use that common foods database, you're going to get all the nutrients, like all the micronutrients even, and you'll even see how much you're getting. You know, it's not always like you'll see like a confidence score as well. If it says, I don't know, like 80% confidence score or 90, like that's great, you know, but it's going to depend on how much labeled stuff you track, really. I will add that they recently, I think this or last week, they updated their database. Now, even a lot of labeled stuff also has the micronutrient values, um, Nice, which is super cool, by the way. But that's also one way to do it. If you look into your nutrition report in chronometer and you see hey you know i'm I'm basically never eating iron okay maybe introduce some iron rich foods you know yeah um but then again also in terms of deficiencies i would first start with looking at are we getting it can we look into chronometer and then can we get a blood test if we really need to um you know if i know yeah, someone like, is what, always what are inside the reason, like what would be the reasons for the deficiencies. Yeah. Right. Because that doesn't even have to be a food intake issue as well. You right. Know? Like so stress, that's... stress alone can cause deficiencies. Like yeah. stress is a one big deficiency we see um, with a lot of stress is magnesium. Um, yeah. 
So like, just like attacking, like I have a post I haven't posted yet, but it basically it's saying, um, no supplement is going to fix your problems. If yeah. you know, your sleep, your nutrition, your movement, and all of that isn't being addressed first, those yeah. have to be addressed first. Um, unless, okay. I mean, they always have to be being addressed first period with every single person. Um, but if there is more complex issues happening, then for sure, I'm going to, you know, incorporate some supplementation based off that person and their, and their symptoms. So like yeah. someone with PCOS, you know, if they have, if they're dealing with like acne and hair growth, like soft palmetto is going to help, you know, a lot with that. So I know that, but I still like to test, right. I still yeah, like to test just to make sure. Yeah. Um, just, and, and, you know, testing gives us an idea, but we're still, we're still treating based off the, the symptoms in the, the person, right? We're not just going based, based off the labs. Um, but, you know, in terms of like, she's asking nutrient deficiencies and supplements. Um, you know, we've talked about this before, but like, I would say some basic ones are like magnesium, um, sure. you know, B12s, uh, or sorry, B complex, just like the B vitamins. Um, vitamin D. B Vitamin D, yep, is a big one. You want you definitely want to take vitamin D with K though too. Make sure it's vitamin yep. D and K three. Um, and what was D3, the other one? K two. Oh yeah, it's, um, D three K two. No worries. Uh, what, what was the other one I was gonna say? Um, I like creatine. Like zinc, zinc too. I mean, yeah. th those can be can be helpful. Um, but again if like you're not sleeping and like you're really stressed and like you're eating high, a bunch of highly processed foods and you're not getting in you know your micronutrients or like you're drinking a lot of alcohol like these things need to be addressed first because you're just basically wasting your money yeah for sure i think even here though it just depends on the person because so, what i will say like sometimes I will say like, hey, there's definitely bigger stuff we're going to take care of, but we might as well create a little bit of, you know, get get things a little bit better by actually supplementing. Yes. But I will still stick to like the very basic ones. Like, I don't know, get like a magnesium for sleep. Yeah. I'm really big on that one, you know, mm -hmm. um, Same. or even just fish oil in the beginning or some mm -hmm. of the basics. You'd be surprised how many people here where I live, where we have no sunlight for a long time. Do not take vitamin D at all, right? I mean, we don't need a blood test for to confirm a deficiency. Then, right, you know? right, right. So it's like, hey, now you should be taking this, and we need higher doses here. So, yep. Cool. And the last question, like pregnancy, she mentioned. I love to hear more about nutrition while nursing. So, from um, a nutritional standpoint, like you need more calories. So. Uh, I mean, there's a general recommendation of like 500 more calories, basically, um, could even be higher than that, you know, post, uh, or during, you know, nursing. Um, cause if you are under eating, you know, you can run the risk of losing that supply, even if you're just pumping. So making sure like you're getting in enough food and like, I mean, the, I, I have like two, I have one postpartum, one pregnant on my roster right now. And like, it's tough. It's a really tough thing. Honestly, they're just so busy. <laughs> like nursing is a full-time job. It is freaking crazy. Um, but you know, if we can get, if you can't, you know, some a thing that I do with my clients is like, if they don't have the time to like prep meals and stuff and whatnot, you know, is it feasible to like get something like pre-made or like, you know, opting for more calorically dense food that you can like grab like healthier options just to make sure those calories are high, higher and you're eating enough um, for you, for baby, but also for you too. Right. I mean, you want to, you want to, you know, you're already kind of sleep deprived and stuff's going on. Um, so, you know, if we can get enough calories and it's only going to help you feel a little bit better too, right? Um, and then in terms of, I'm not going to touch on supplementation there um, just because it's, again, it depends and I don't want people going and taking supplements and it just not, it's just not a good thing. So <laughs> I'm just going to touch on the calorie standpoint that you do need 
significant amount of calories, um, you know, during that, during that chapter. Yeah. And just like normal foods, I guess. Right. I mm -hmm. will say like, I don't have experience with this, uh, scenario, but what I do know is that, Hey, like the calories, like you said already, mm -hmm. but calories. the nutrients too, like, Hey, you're, course, you're feeding yeah. yourself as well as that little kid, basically, not mm -hmm. even basically like literally, <laughs> you know, Yeah. you want to get those micronutrients too, you know? Totally. Yeah. Uh, so don't birth, think 500 calories, fit? great, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, no. You definitely want to focus on quality of food, 100%. I feel like she knows this already just yeah, by yeah. her questions. <laughs> definitely, yeah, I um, think so too. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, in terms of like people to follow, so, oh, it, what's her handle? So one's birth fit. I like them. Um, I actually worked with them years ago when I lived in California <clears throat> another one let me just i'm forgetting the her handle i think it's prenatal nutritionist yes prenatal nutritionist her name is ryan kipping another really good follow uh and then you mentioned joelle samantha so she owns level 10 another really good one for sure um that's all i can think about right now same. Cool. What do you think? I think we're good because we're we're over that 30 minutes. Yeah, I think so too. Let's leave the next one for the next time. Yeah. Anything else to share? I think that's it. No. I think that's it. I think so too. As always, guys, thank you so much for listening. You can always follow us on Instagram at Talking Nutrition Podcast at what's yours again? <laughs> Christine and Dali. Just yeah, Christine and And I, I made a new, oh, that's another thing I can say. I made a new uh, Instagram for KA Nutrition and Training. It's just ka.nutrition. Cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I am Johan Vesters underscore OCS. I just had to think about that one for a second. I was like, oh, shit, because <laughs> I changed it recently. But we'll link that down below. If you like this episode, make sure to, uh, to share it on your stories. If you would like to do so, share it with a friend. Feel free to drop us a five-star review to help us grow the show. Only if you really believe it's a five-star worth, you know, mm -hmm. review. And then we will talk to you next weekend. Thanks for listening.